Hey guys, this is Pablo with Meditation Amsterdam. And in today's video, we get to have a go at the next episode in the book series, The Pearl Beyond Price by A.H. Almas. This is the book right here. Uh, I believe this is the seventh episode. And um, it helps if you uh, view the previous six, if you've missed these so that you get a kind of sequential explanation of how uh, the story builds up or the explanations build up. Uh, but it's not 100% necessary. This, uh, uh, this video uh, also lives uh, on its own. And um, to make a quick recap of last video, we were talking about how um, the image of mother or the um, mental object of the mother is uh, formed so early in our psyche that it forms part of what we consider to be our core identity. Uh, even though we may have become mentally, emotionally and physically fully independent from mother, in other words, what psychology calls separation and individuation. And uh, although it depends on which psychology we're talking about, uh, traditional psychology considers that separation to happen when toddlers start to separate physically and uh, become a little more and more independent and throughout the earlier years of life. Uh, Jung considers the actual individuation process to be closer to uh, what Almas considers individuation. So it's a, a full uh, separation, um, uh, full adulthood, as, as you could say, uh, from a spiritual perspective, which means um, a, a complete disentanglement of the object of mother from our sense of identity. Now, um, so it starts, um, it, it starts there, let, let's say, when it comes to this whole separation topic. Um, and that's where we left off in the last video. And in this video, I wanted to go into um, a concept that Almas introduces, which he calls the merging essence. And uh, I will read a couple of quotes that describe uh, the characteristics of the merging essence. Uh, but before going there, we could essentially describe it as this sense of being completely compenetrated uh, within ourselves so totally in touch with um with our core sense of self and merged so intimately um that there is a there is a complete unification with experience and um he describes certain um characteristics of this state so he says uh, it's, a, it's a form of love and it feels like the presence of goodness. He also fe says it feels melted and melting. It feels melted like melted butter, but clear as some kind of very light and delicate honey. And he also says it has the characteristic color of clear gold. Now, uh, this might sound a little bit strange and I'd be uh, actually quite curious to hear in the comments if you have experienced something like this. If you have, it's an unmistakable uh, state of mind because that color of clear gold that Almaz describes is very, uh, very, very characteristic. It looks like this golden shimmer on, on top, like a, like a kind of filter layer where everything becomes more vibrant, more alive and, and with a kind of golden hue all over the place. And it's a warm gold that is also very, very welcoming. So you it's almost a goal that you feel in the body and see in your, uh, in your sense fields. Um, I can see a little bit of it even now as I'm describing it. And um, I'm going through a little bit of uh, detail here to describe it because you may have come across that experience. And uh, if you have, it's really unforgettable. So that's what Almas calls the merging essence. It's um, experience in merger with mother, which is uh, how we get to neediness uh, at some point along the way, and I will explain uh, how this merging essence uh, takes us there. Uh, but first, it was important to describe that uh, the merging essence 
is something that as uh, infants we experience when we receive care uh, from our mother. We, we feel this total goodness, this warmth, and uh, it's almost like everything is fine in the world. Um, my first experience with such uh, emerging essence, uh, the best way I could describe it, it was as if I was being given a, a great big warm hug by Mother Nature that I had been longing for for a very, very long time. Uh, so that's uh, to Almaz the emerging essence. Now, when we experience this, uh, so the infant needs this, right? That, that's the one thing that you need from mother is, uh, of course, via uh, physical and emotional care, uh, because you need that to, to survive, but it elicits the merging essence in you so that you can feel that everything is good in the world. And you would be wondering, well, how is this uh, problematic, right? Uh, why would this lead to the topic of the video, which is uh, the root of, of neediness, the, the, the root cause where neediness arises for us. And I will, um, I will uh, describe it now, and it is what in psychology is called merger, right? Now, what Almas explains is as follows, and I will now quote, he says, Since the merging essence, in other words, this warm, everything is okay in the world glow, is dominant in the symbiotic phase, meaning when infant and mother are symbiotically joined with one another, and is especially present at times of gratification, it becomes associated in the memory of the infant with gratification. So he explains and he says, after a while, the child cannot distinguish the merging essence from the experience of gratification. So he cannot separate it from the perception of his needs being satisfied. In other words, he does not separate it from the mental representations of the activities or processes leading to gratification. So, need for the merging essence becomes associated in the mind with the need for other things, such as food, comfort, protection, safety, pleasure, warmth, contact, discharge of tension, and so on. Now, we're going to spend a little t bit of time on this because this is um, really, really a crucial point. What Almas is essentially saying here, and I, I did uh, a few months back uh, a video about this, may even have quoted this passage here, um, is that because we feel this inner goodness and, this, and experience this warm golden hue and this experience, when mother provides us with the gratification of our needs, the mind commits the ultimate uh, logical fallacy, which is it confuses correlation with causation. It confuses the fact that the merging essence is experienced with um, the providing of uh, elements in the exterior, which give us the gratification, and eventually it sees those elements around us or those situations as the cause of the gratification. When at that stage, uh, it's a it's a forgivable mistake. It might even be the cause of feeling the merging essence. You know, the fact that we get food suddenly, we feel that merging essence, or that we get a warm hug, for example. Uh, the problem is that the merging essence is an internal capacity that we have. And from the moment it gets associated with gratification from the outside through the care of our mother, we, or rather our mind mistakenly believes that you can only experience the merging essence when gratification from the outside is obtained. And from this point on, neediness is a given. That's it. <clears throat> it's done. It's, it's very, very difficult from the mind from this point onwards to disentangle the merging essence or the experience of the merging essence from obtaining gratification.
it's, it's nearly impossible. Those two have become so closely associated so early on in life that it takes an enormous amount of work to separate them. Now, um, psychology often doesn't seem to see a problem with this uh, because that merging essence that Almas is talking about is hardly ever even discussed in psychology. In psychology, we aim to be happy, joyful, assertive, and all those kind of things. But this full golden immersion, this uh, melting and uh, uh, melted and melting experience that Almaz describes is hardly ever even mentioned. And so um, that's where things such as healthy attachment uh, is mentioned. Uh, I had a, an interesting instance this week where I was talking to someone who I believe to be one of the most well put together human beings I know, uh, proactive, assertive, emotionally balanced, has a long-term loving successful relationship. In other words, healthily attached. And this person what was describing, not without a degree of distress and, and distaste, the fact that uh, this person and their partner cannot even contemplate sleeping more than two or three nights away from one another because the amount of anxiety and stress that this generates is just, they can't stand it. Now, this strikes me uh, as, um, I would say, um, yeah, it's, it's simply not wholesome uh, from, from, a, from a spiritual or, or even uh, from, a, from a psychological perspective. There's something there that is simply not correct. And yet, uh, we would likely be classifying this as healthy attachment. The relationship works just fine. Uh, now, there may be degrees of this, there may be different personalities, and someone could say, well, that's not really healthy att attachment, or you name it. Uh, but I think that uh, there's something to be said about the unconscious level of neediness that hides behind that which appears to be healthy attachment. I mean, the question that arises is, why attach at all? What's, what's going on there? Right? Why, why the need to uh, obtain that gratification and to... Uh, feel like there's this external pillar to which you can now um, uh, attach and, and depend on. Uh, I have nothing against relationships, by the way. It's simply uh, trying to uh, explore the topic. Let's put it like that. There's something to be said about what psychology considers to be healthy versus what spirituality considers to be healthy. Now, um, so there you have it. This is um, where neediness is born. It is in a confusion between the capacity to fully merge with oneself and how the mind associates that with gratification being provided um, externally. And then comes something very interesting uh, still uh, on the topic and it has to do with, uh, with the ego. And I will first uh, read the quote and it goes like this. It says, the fact that ego development as it is usually or as it usually occurs and as it is conceptualized by developmental psychology is antithetical to the integration of the merging essence. It says that um, the merging essence is characterized by the absence of individual boundaries and separateness. This is very important because the ego is made up of individual boundaries, of course. Clearly, the outcome is that it is impossible to have a separate individuality and to truly integrate the regulating and soothing functions. The two are antithetical. And since the individuality of the ego can never integrate these functions in any fundamental way, it can never be completely harmonious and cannot by its nature experience deep contentment and happiness. Ego cannot exist without internal conflicts. Uh, and it all points to uh, the fact that the state that ego cannot be happy or contented in any real or lasting way. So um, this, is, uh, this is in essence uh, the, the topic of today's video. Um, I don't know about you, but when I read this, it made a very big impression on me because I think it is... Uh, is the tragedy of all times. The 
a confusion that happens early on, which leads to the misunderstanding that you cannot gener generate full contentment within yourself other than through the obtaining of gratification from the outside is probably responsible for 90% of all the uh, evil done in the world. Uh, I'm making up that percentage, but uh, make of it uh, what you will. I think um, a lot of the trouble that we have as a race stems from that apparent incapacity to just feel 100% okay with yourself and to generate that goodness and that melting, honeyish, warm feeling for yourself. So um, that puts us in a state of deep and tremendous lack that is very, very painful, uh, even if that pain is uh, most of the time suppressed or uh, unconscious. So uh, I'm very curious to hear about your take on this one, uh, especially about the experience of the merging essence or the absence of it for that matter. And as usual, if you think that these videos are helpful to others, then your liking, sharing and subscribing is highly appreciated, makes the channel far more visible. And I'll be back with more videos pretty soon. Until then, cheerio and bye bye.